Right, so in this example, we'll be looking at subroutines and functions using uh, that for temperature conversion. We've previously gone through using subroutines and functions in a console program. We're now going to use subroutines and functions in a Windows form application. We've already written these functions that do these conversions. We wrote them previously into examples. Um, and now we're actually going to utilize these within a Windows form. Right. So a Windows form application Well, I picked Windows form application. That means it's going to have a user interface, right? And a Windows form application actually allows you to add on um, some visual elements the user can interact with. So I'm going to use a toolbox, right, to place things onto um, the form. So I need something for my input. So I would have a button. And remember, you can actually name these. So I click properties. I can give it my own name. Right? So text box for input. It's nice. I need to have a label next to it so the user knows what to do. Right? This is label for input. And of course, the text within this, the text is enter temperature. I'm going to first use a um, a combo box, meaning I'll allow the person to pick whether he wants to go from Celsius to Fahrenheit or, well, no, the options, the usual. Right. And for a combo box, of course, it's my combo box for input. And there are some options, which are the items. So you can go there and add in the items. So the pot should be inside. So I would have. Um, And of course, I will have um, a label that I will use for displaying my result. Of course, if you have a form, the text, if you change it, temperature conversion, no, that's the Windows name, the name now up here, temperature conversion, right, and let's see it run, right, so this is the program, but currently it does nothing, um, nothing useful, right, so what we would like to do is to add some buttons perhaps. Um, that when clicked will perform the action. Convert. Right. Now, before I actually use the convert, I would like to see how the combo box works. If you double click on well a button in Visual Basic in the IDE, it will give you a subroutine. So now you know how subroutines work. And of course you should understand it now because you can see the subroutine has some things it's taking, uh, some parameters, just discuss parameters. And it means it's taking an object and some event. So it means a subroutine, in this case when you click, it knows who the sender is. So that, that's uh, how does it know? It actually knows because it's passed to it and it does some work, right? So this, uh, the work that we're going to do here, I just want to see how the combo box works. So my combo box was called combo box input, right? 
there are these things called selected index. So remember, um, we talked about arrays in class. Remember, an array could be defined something as dim my list 0 to 10 as a string. Right. So if I say my list of 0 is equal to hello, um, my list of 1 equals to hi, uh, my list of 2 is equal to yo. So it means the selected index, that combo box input actually has a similar capability in that there's a list of items in there. And selected index is actually, is it zero? That means hello, did a person pick zero? Did it pick one? Did you pick two? So the selected index is actually a very um, nice way to find out what the user picked. Right. So I'm actually going to um, dim my result as string. I'm going to put a selected index into that string. And remember, I had a label that I was using for the result. And that thing dot text. Remember, if any time you want to display something outputting to an input, you say whatever that thing is dot text for buttons, for labels. Um, yeah, I think buttons and labels, but text boxes too have dot text. So you can assign a value into it. So this is like me doing console uh, dot out dot right line. Right. So the text is to my left. So I'm just going to always be displaying what the selected index is. Right. So I'm just saying what the selected index is e equal to. Right. So let me run this so we see how selected index varies. So if I click, it's minus 1. That means nothing has been picked. If I pick something, it's 0. If I pick... Um, that's the first thing in the list and if I pick the second thing that's what I get and the nice thing is we've previously written code that handles this right so I'm going to go to our old code and well take some things away right of course um, in our old code we were printing to the screen why don't you enter one or two but now we have a combo box and that's the work for us so we, we don't need to we can just use a combo box now remember our numeric option, the person enters one or two, that has become, um, in this case, our selected index. So we're going to say whatever the selected index is, um, we're going to put that into our numeric option. This is really cool. Right. Next, we're going to do the same work we're doing. Right. That is, once we got our numeric input we did something to check is it one is it two in this case one very interesting we just match it up really nicely so for one we do um, Celsius to Fahrenheit for the other case we flip it so we can actually more or less use almost the exact same code Alright, so we now have that same a similar if statement. But of course, um, the temperature is coming out of, and remember, where does the temperature come out of? Next time, not reading line, the temperature is coming from a text box that we define for input, and the value comes from dot text. This is why I say if you can code console, you can code UI. It's actually going to be easier for you because you guys going to take it and what modify how you are getting your data how you're sending information out and often the form would have all the things you need right so um, the only thing I'm missing here is my string temperature and my numeric temperature right. so we are more or less taking the code well we have converted temperature as well let's not forget that So those are the various things that we needed. The only thing left are functions. Let's go get them. Right. 
Now remember any style you use it is okay. In this case I'm using the highest level code that we currently showed you. Right. And all I'm doing is putting those two subroutines that I defined here and that's it. Right. Now how do we output? Remember um, we don't need these console out anymore. Right. That means once I've finished putting the temperature in, how do I actually um, send it to the user? And in this case, I remember I had a label. Right, and that's it. Because I'm not using what um, I'm not using console dot out the right line. Remember, if you switch to a form, the things are already placed. So all you do is, if you are doing output, you just say, um, so for an output, I'll do. So here's okay, here's an example of output. Label result dot text equals. And when I'm doing input, it's the other way. In this case, some variable is equal to something dot text. So it's just like an assignment. So um, let's run this and see how it works. Okay, so if I put 90, convert temperature, nothing happens. But if I say that, there it goes. And the reason why this is working is, remember, when I get the selected index from the combo box, and the combo box uses an array, so it's, it tells me minus 1, meaning there's nothing, if nothing was picked. It tells me it is 0 if the first one was picked. Remember, arrays like these combo box um, things in there are just like normal arrays and we've talked about arrays previously this is an example as I said 0, 1, 2 that's how it's numbering it so the things in the combo box are 0, 1, 2 and I can use selected index to actually get the value I want so just pay attention to what your own combo box does right so just pay attention what's in the 0 position so in my case if you pick my code what is in the zero position is pick one right? and actually that means depending on what the person picked so for example I could say um, if numeric option is less than one then label results dot text called it please pick a valid option so you, you could do this right so if someone does okay not picked yet please pick a valid option please pick a valid option all right so the reason why it's 32 is it's actually treating it as zero so zero is actually that one let's see and well so this is actually working all right now, um, aside combo boxes, some people also um, prefer to use just buttons. So I, I can have a button. So I'm just going to do a similar one. One button that will be used when converting. One way. So a button that takes convert to... Uh, Fahrenheit. If you want to convert to Fahrenheit, that's the button you use. Right. And I can have another button that I can use when converting to Celsius. This one called convert to F. I'll call this convert to C. All right, means if I double click, what happens? So you see, this is just another um, subroutine. But of course, when converting to Fahrenheit or Celsius, I'm going to have similar definitions. I'm just copying almost the exact same code, right? And um, for the Celsius conversion, 
I am going to call um, con oh, oh, this is Fahrenheit. So I just call um, Celsius to Fahrenheit, and of course, I can output it the same way I was doing before. Sorry, I was using a label and I was actually printing it too. So you can see we are actually reusing the subroutines and functions. We don't have to create another function for Celsius Fahrenheit, it's already here. Right. Um, converted temperature is, and of course, I could have something nice Fahrenheit, like degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Right. So a specific one can do a specific thing. So let's try this out. So if I said convert to Fahrenheit, see it's, it's working. It's using the same function, 250. Right. So you could also put your work um, that is as far as using subroutines and functions. Well, and also form elements, you could decide to use buttons to drive your work. Right. But this is going to be Fahrenheit to Celsius. So you see, once you've actually written functions and subroutines, it becomes very easy to um, to write and get code done. And realize I started from console just using um, and defining my functions. So you shouldn't worry. So long as you can code, you can always learn to use the user interface. Right? Nice. Okay. All right. So that's it. Thank you very much for going through this example.